good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time of day it is, when you hear this message, I pray that your mind, your heart, and your spirit are all poised to receive, to accept, and to respond to words of wisdom. Ashe. You know, when we think about the messages that we get about Orisha and about the Orisha tradition, it's easy to slip into this um, habit of trying to explain the unexplainable, right? And, and, and people can lapse into this uh, way of approaching it or talking about it as so mysterious and so, so fantastic and um, so, you know, just mystical. Right. And sometimes when I hear people talk and I'm listening for 10 minutes, I'm listening for half an hour and I can't understand what what the person is talking about is sets off a little alarm. It's like a red flag for me. Say, ah, this 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 is a little bit too mysterious. Right. Um, and we don't need to do that. that that's why I, f I feel that we don't need to make Orisha mysterious. Uh, it is as mysterious as something like love, right? Love in and of itself is mysterious. You don't have to make it to be more mysterious. You know, um, all you need to do is introduce someone to it. Once someone has experienced it and they felt it, they'll know and they'll be able to tell you in their own terms, or they won't be able to tell you, but they'll know the experience. That was fantastic. It was over the top, right? But the attempts to create that in the minds of people to me just doesn't quite sit right you know um likewise because orisha is is so potent and the effects of of orisha are so real people can also tend towards over emphasizing the the powers of orisha right and sometimes you know, people can get carried away with making really extreme claims, even boasts about what Orisha devotion or Orisha can do. You know, and you get the impression that, wow, once I do this ritual and once I have this charm, I'll be able to walk on water. I'll be able to, you know, jump a tall building in a single bound. I'll be bulletproof and, you know, I'll be able to read everybody's minds and you know, and uh, that that again that that just is a little red flag for me when 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 I when I hear the conversation leaning too heavily into these these like you become some kind of a superhero if you're associated with Orisha because Orisha is it it is it, it doesn't require us to do all that. It is a powerful experience. All you need to do is experience it, okay? All you need to do is um, feel the Orisha or see the Orisha move through your life and around your life and you'll know exactly how powerful it is. It doesn't require us to hype it up, hype it up, hype it up, hype it up, okay? And this is the case, both in terms of mysterious and powerful talk and, and, and you know, it is most important when we come to um, Ori, because everyone, or I shouldn't say everyone, but a lot of people are talking about Ori this and Ori that and Ori the other. And it's, it's, it's good because Ori is supreme. Ori Akwere, Ori is supreme. Ori is the zenith. It's the highest. Ori is the one who created all the deities. Ori is, is the one who defeated Shango in heaven and made Shango the Lord of Koso, gave him the bata. And he, he defeated Ogun and sent him to Ire and gave him iron to work. And he gave Opatala clay and sent him to Iranje. And even Orumila, his natural gifts and talents were bestowed upon him by Ori. Orumila became the master of Iki because of what Ori did. And so, yes, Ori is this amazing deity who is you know a greater among equals when it comes to the orisha and there's no disputing that 
but again, it doesn't need to be uh, over exaggerated in terms of its mysterious, you know, qualities and it and its power, right? Ori is the most importantly responsible for choosing one's destiny, right? So before you get caught up in the idea of having an icon for Ori or, you know, something of that nature or doing, you know, rituals to, you know, feed your Ori and things like that. Those are very important. But at the core, what you need to know is that Ori is, is a superpower. Ori has this, the ability to transform your life because Ori is the one that chose your destiny in the heavenly realm. Ori is the one that chooses destiny. That's that's why Ori is so essential. So anything you do with Ori is aligning you with your prenatal choice, right? And that is the, the place where you decided on what your identity would be, what kinds of capabilities you would bring into the world, what kind of contribution you would have the potential to make. That's why we, we get back in alignment with Ori. It's like going to your original vibration. It's going to your original qualities, and reactivating them and bringing them to the forefront. This is why Ordi is so key, right? But it, it isn't just the event of doing a ritual or a ceremony for Ordi or having an icon for Ordi. It's understanding that Ordi is the decision maker. Ordi is the one that chose your destiny. And so the way you strengthen your Ordi, the way you stay in contact with your Ordi is most fundamentally through exercising Sound decision making. How are you making your decisions? Okay. Everybody can tell you that, um, you know, the clothes you wear, only 50% of, the, of, the, of your look and your attractiveness is going to come from the clothes, the actual clothing. Cars, cameras, hammers, guns, any kind of tool, any instrument that you have, no matter how good it is. And you should always go for the best quality. Look for the best quality materials that you can. But no matter how good the quality is, the, 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 no matter how high quality the material is, it can only get you 50% of the desired outcome. Okay? The drum, if you play a drum, that, that no matter you got the best drum ever made, it can only get you 50% of the sound that you want. The best gun, you got a gun, and it can only... The, your accuracy is only going to be maximum 50% the result of that gun. Makeup that you use, no matter how good the makeup is, it depends on how you use it. That's what's going to determine really how good it is. Okay? And so it is with if you have an icon for Ordi or you do a ritual ceremony for Ordi, you're only going to get 50% of your desired outcome from that event or from that particular experience. The other 50% is going to depend on you. And that 50% means your decision-making has to be consistent with your prenatal choice. Your decision-making has to promote the kinds of uh, outcomes and experiences that are in alignment with your prenatal choice. Otherwise, <laughs> we're only going to get 50%. And in, in school, 50% is a, is a fail. Okay, so you got the best materials, but you got the worst decision-making skills. It's going to be registered as a fail. All right. So what that means is that you, you have to evaluate your decision-making. How are you making decisions? Are you making decisions based on the best information? Are you gathering the best information? Are you, are you gathering information from Fox News? Right, which is just like an opinion-based. You know, we talk about Fox News. It's like a... It's a it's a, a, a placeholder for opinion based news reporting. Right. Are you getting your information from people's opinions, from public opinion? Are you getting your information from the gossip mill? OK, because you got to have high quality information to weigh these things out and evaluate what the best decision is. Are you making decisions based on on a, just on a hunch? Are you improvising your way through everything, right? Are you waiting till the last minute and you're all, you're just, the only way you can make decisions is when you're under duress, when you're all angry, you got to get yourself all mad to make a decision. How are you making decisions? Okay, you have to evaluate that. 
and, de and really assess, do I have a really sound and solid decision-making process? Okay, does my decision-making process promote choosing things and deciding about uh, behaviors and experiences that are really congruent with my prenatal choice, right? Do I have a decision-making process that supports my destiny? These are the things that you need to evaluate and understand really, really clearly if you truly want to master the power and the potential of your Ori, okay? And so what we do in the Orisha Lifestyle Academy is we present the best quality information, okay? We give you the most high quality uh, verses of Ifa, Oriki, songs, etc. But everything is presented in a way that is person centric. It is it is it centers around the power of one. How does this content and this experience support and reinforce who you are and the way you want to show up in the world? How does this particular content reveal your natural gifts and talents, who you serve? how you want to show up, what's the best way to refine your skills and your abilities so that you can provide a more high quality experience for the people who matter most. That's our approach. 100% everything that we do is, is going to converge upon your ability to show up in the places that matter most and do the things that you decided to do or that you chose to do in the beginning because it's a process. Okay, the small things you do every single day are so much more important than the big things you say from time to time or the big things you do ever so often. It's a slow process. And if you can appreciate that process and respect that process and trust that, trust that process, gradually, bit by bit, the deities, your ori, your ancestors, ifa, they will all give you the feedback necessary for you to make the, the necessary changes and adjustments to stay on course or to get back on course and to fulfill the journey in a way that's most consistent with your ancestral promise and mo most consistent with your personal destiny. And so I want to invite you to examine and explore the options that we have to offer. Uh, in the School of Orisha Studies, in the Orisha Lifestyle Academy, through books, through blogs, through videos, um, through classes, so that you can find the point of entry that makes, you know, makes the most sense for you. You may need to start with reading some of the books. You may need to start with the blog. You may need to start with joining me on social media and follow some of the conversations and get involved with some of the conversations, right? Or you may be really you may be ready to join the school. To, to, to get enrolled in a class and start really chewing through and processing the information with other students, right? Whatever the case may be, what I wanna do is I encourage you to take advantage of the opportunity to enhance your decision-making, to get in touch with your decision-making and, and, and refine your decision-making so that you can start living the medicine that will heal your life and heal the lives of those who you are destined to serve. Aboru aboye, aboshishe.